Yeah, I think sometimes it's not always clear to, to you as um, writing or to students how much information they need to give about each study. There are no hard and fast rules about that. For some studies, you'll be required to give five or six lines maybe, and for others, simply you tack on two lines onto that study. I suppose as part of the discussion, I think it's important um, to explain really what a theme is and what a theme should consist of within your literature review. And I think this is very helpful from the point of view is if you think you have four or five themes within your literature review, that means you can break the sections into those areas and discuss them separately. Now, that's not to say you won't work on two or three themes at the one time, but it means that you, you're, if you like, the information is going to be bounded within this theme. And I think what's important to say within each theme is that when you're writing, the style is actually quite formal in a literature review and it's quite objective. So you don't really give personal opinions, you tend to just concentrate solely on the research articles that you're actually reviewing. So you'll get very familiar with those studies and you paraphrase the information in those studies. So what this means is that you actually internalise the study, you read it a few times, you might actually make notes on it, and we'll talk about that again maybe, but then you'll actually, uh, you'll actually explain the study in your own words. And what you'll do then, so that's how you'll, you'll actually critically evaluate the study. You'll say this is a good study because it was a large scale population, or it's a good study because they did a pilot study, so it's quite a credible study. Or you might say it's a good study because they interviewed people in depth and got their experiences of how they coped with stress on third level. So you, that would be a very, so you, so you have a very, very good study, but then in a very logical way you can tag on another study onto that that mightn't be as robust maybe, or it mightn't be as credible, but it might have similar findings. So what you're doing there is you're going to critically analyse the studies within each actual within each team and you're going to synthesize the studies as well. So critically in a, a, analyzing studies, what does this mean? It means where you look at a study and you look for its strengths and weaknesses. And then when you synthesize our research, what you're actually doing is that you're actually putting the research kind of together. You're giving us an overview of what's there. So you're taking one study that looked at sleep, we we'll say, and then the next, the next, and another study you found also looked at sleep, but this was with a much smaller group, and maybe it was an older study. So what you got to, do, what you, what's a good way, I should say, to actually integrate the information, the theme, is to use words like similarly, or um, you know, Smith, two thousand and seven in brackets or parentheses, agreed with the previous findings insofar as they also found that sleep was a problem for students who were experiencing stress. Um, however, this is a much smaller study and you can very quickly move on. So what we're beginning to see is that if you start treating each section of the literature review independently, it's far easier and less intimidating to cope with it. So, You've, so what you've done in essence is you've gathered literature, you've reviewed it, you need to go into the, that probably in more detail again, but you've also synthesised this literature and you're coming up with some kind, before you close a theme, you're just kind of highlighting the fact that there is a, you know, that there is consensus, that there is a relationship there, but actually this is an area that merits further attention. So later on then if you're going to decide that you're going to look at stress and uh, in undergrad students and sleeping, you can flag this up. This can become, this is, so you're building the rationale for your study as you go through the literature review. My first tip is, I think, very early on, you must build a relationship with your supervisor. They're going to guide you through the process and they have the experience in this. And there is an expression, work smarter and not harder, and that's the smart thing to do. Very good. The second tip I have is what I mentioned previously is that all the way through your literature review you're working towards your research question. Do not end up starting with the research question and answering it during your review or else what's the point in doing the research? You've already answered the question. So you work your way down towards your research question. Don't get disheartened. This is a long, pro protracted process. It's possible, some students find it the hardest part of doing the actual project itself. And 
it takes reading for quite a, until you really get to grips with the literature, and then it takes drafting and redrafting of your work. You're moving materials sometimes between themes, so don't get disheartened. That's my third tip. And can I just close by saying, the thing about the literature review compared to other things, it's a very structured piece of work, really, which makes it, even though initially when you start it, it's, it can be quite overwhelming, but actually when you get it down into the weeds, it's actually a very structured piece. I think when you bear that in mind, you're constructing an assignment, if you like, and you're moving through it logically. So I, so I think that students that get to grips with it, um, really can, you can do very well in this particular assignment.